you've probably come across bamboo socks and bamboo t-shirts as an environmentally friendly alternative to cotton. But did you know that you can get fine art papers made out of bamboo? Or out of agave? Or out of sugar cane? Well, you can. And I thought I would put them through their paces to see how they hold up against our traditional cotton or cellulose papers. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I share a tip or trick that I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week I'm going to explore some of the environmentally friendly alternatives to our traditional watercolour paper. If you've painted in watercolour for any length of time, I hope you've come to the realisation that your paper is infinitely more important than your paint or your brushes or any of the other paraphernalia that we have. If your painting is not behaving itself, it's probably not your skill, and it's not that you haven't got the most beautiful pointy brush in the world, or that you haven't treated yourself to the most beautiful artist-grade watercolour paints. It may be down just to the quality of your paper. So I am really intrigued to see how these stand up. The papers I'm looking at today are all made by Hannemuller, which is a German company that's been making paper since 1584, so you kind of hope they've got the hang of it by now. In the interests of openness, I have been sent these papers actually for a totally different project to try out, but I thought reviewing them would be lots of fun. So what I've got is Harmony, and I've got a rough here, 300 GSM, which is £140, and it's a little block. And I believe that Harmony is a surface-sized cellulose paper. I have got a Garvey watercolour paper, which is 290 GSM, £135. And that's got 70% Agave fibre, 30% cotton, and again, that is a cold press surface. I've got sugar cane paper in a block, again, 290 GSM, 135. The sugar cane fibre comes from the, the sugar industry. It's a byproduct which would be burnt, apparently. These papers came in sheets. So I have got Britannia here, which is a watercolour paper, not surface, cellulose, and that's 300 GSM, £140. And then I've got a bamboo paper, which is actually a mixed media paper rather than purely for watercolour. So I'll be interested to see what that's like. And just for comparison, I've got a piece of Bockingford, £140, also a cellulose paper, and that's one I use all the time. So I thought it'd be useful to do a comparison to see how these papers compare to what I'm used to. And I thought if I do some wet and wet and I do some glazing and I do some lifting and just look at the texture, it would start to give us a good idea of how these papers behave. Do they pill up? Do they fall to pieces if I'm rough with them? Will they let me lift? Will they let me glaze? Well, who knows? Paint-wise, I've just grab some random colours and it doesn't honestly matter what colours I use because I'm just going to test all these colours on but I will be interested to see how bright they stay on the paper. These are Renaissance paints which is a Polish brand. They're artist quality watercolours and I've got a transparent gold ochre, a quin red and a Prussian blue. Well what shall we start with? Let's look at the visuals to start with. So in terms of whiteness, I would say that the agave and the Britannia are the brightest white, whereas the bamboo, sugarcane and the harmony are slightly more creamy. Bamboo has a smoother texture because it is a mixed media paper. Texture-wise, Sugarcane, there wouldn't be any surprise there, yet it looks like a cold press to me. Uh, the Britannia is a sort of more random 
less obvious texture i know this is really hard to pick up the agave seems to be a very similar texture to the britannia and the harmony seems to be quite a similar texture to the sugar cane again just comparing them to the bockingford i would say that the harmony and sugar cane are very similar in their sort of roughness with that bamboo a lot smoother and just the agave and britannia a little bit more mottled so let's start with the britannia i've got a few notes to the side say so it's 300 gsm and it does come in cold press which we've got here and then hot and rough i'm just seeing how it smooths out with a wash I say that it's hard sized and that it's very good for wet in wet technique so let's just put a patch of our quin red there and i'll just grab some of my prussian blue dot it in and see how it moves around on the paper and oh let's why not we'll just bung in some of that transparent yellow ochre or gold ochre i think it was called and just see how they move around and that looks rather lovely and then let's just go wet up to wet see how they they mix and merge and just start to get a bit of a feel for, for how they're going to behave they're getting some nice soft marks there oh i'm getting rather lovely cauliflower back here so the sheets that, that these come in are 50 by 65 centimeters so they're slightly smaller than the imperial sheets that we're used to which is oh what's that 56 by 76 centimeters just going to put down a flat wash here so i can let that dry or flattish wash let that dry because i want to see how well it glazes and how well it lifts i use slightly thicker paint for a sort of more dry brush that just gives you an idea of the texture but one thing when i was looking at all their papers was that they actually do a selection pad so with 14 of the the papers in it you can buy one pad so you can test the different weights and the different papers and find the one that suits you without having to buy a pad of each and i thought that was a really great idea do exactly the same if i can remember what i did with the bamboo paper so that was some of that quin red and i'm just adding a bit more water to see how it thins out over the paper i'm then putting a bit of a, ooh, a wash area slightly more diluted so I can look at that wet in wet. And again, we can see some lovely movement on the surface, which is good. See how that moves. Maybe here we just put patches of the colour next to each other to see how they start to interact and blend. I just a bit of dry brushing i say there isn't as much visibly there isn't as much texture on this bamboo paper so no surprises there it's not coming through as much as say on this britannia and then let's just for coming back doing a bit of a, a patch here that i can glaze over I should have said the bamboo only comes in the knot surface whereas that britannia does come in cold hot and rough so that's something on their natural uh, papers they only come in one surface and it only comes in one weight just looking at the harmony here it says it's surface sized so that should be good for wet in wet and it's a natural white paper uh, says that it's really resilient for masking fluids and it says it's good for correction so that could be interesting and it is available in cold pressed rough and hot pressed too and let's see how that lovely quin red how bright and clear that st stays on the surface 
and I can feel the different texture here and you can see it coming through even in this um, just sort of wiggle of a wash you know compared to this the bamboo a lot smoother and then you can see the texture coming through because that was rough so let's just put some wet down so that we can have a look at that wet in wet it certainly travels around nicely on that surface I think I'd put more water on this one than on the previous so maybe it's all traveling a bit further it's just slightly more concentrated paint there much as you try and do the same thing on each surface inevitably it's not fully scientific but let's let's try to make them a light for light comparison I'm going to put this an area down so we can do a bit of glazing when that's dry and then of course we would expect to see a lot more texture coming out on the edges of a dry wash and again it's not the roughest I've ever seen in my life but you can see some of that texture coming through so this is the sugar cane again it's 70% sugar cane and as I said, it was a byproduct of the sugar industry. Sugar cane gives great strength to the paper, and the cotton, the 30% cotton, gives a softness. It's cold press, it's 290 grams, so it's only 10, 10 grams difference, which frankly is neither here nor there. And again, it's that natural white. So let's see how our colours whether they stay bright and clear on this surface or not. Quite a regular texture that's showing through the, the wash there. Can you see those vertical lines, which I'm not sure I really like. I think I like something that looks a little bit more random, a little bit less machine. Let's see how it dries. Really, we do need to make all, all our judgments when they dry, trying to get a very quick feel of it. Yeah, this was just getting that texture. So I think it is actually when we're dry brushing, that texture doesn't look as regular as it did through that wash. So I really want to see how this dries because that actually looks OK. I think this is going to turn out to be quite interesting. This is my agave 290. They say that this paper is particularly suitable for glazing because of the way it's sized. So that will be interesting to see whether we notice much difference. So this is just looking at how it spreads for our wet in wet not getting that texture through that i didn't like this is the sugar cane say got that really strong texture through this feels different and i much prefer the texture of this agave to that sugar cane now if this is meant to be good for glazing let's just get our test area on and we can come back and then Say so if I sort of dry brush, we don't get a lot of that dry brush sort of texture coming through because this is a bit smoother and more mottled rather than having a distinct texture. Let me do exactly the same with Bockingford, just because I say it's what I use an awful lot. So seeing how they sort of behave next to each other makes sense and you can see to say that the texture is coming through quite a lot there a little more random and not so vertical as the sugarcane texture definitely more pronounced than the, the agave 
and I wouldn't have said there was a huge amount of difference between this Harmony, which is a rough, compared to this Bockingford, which is a, a cold press. Quite interesting uh, in terms of the agave and the bamboo that I said were quite similar texture. We're getting quite a few sort of watermarks coming through it there. It doesn't appear to be particularly evenly, even as it's drying. And again here, whereas the specific watercolour paper does seem to be behaving better. We'll let them dry and have a look at that glazing and lifting as well. I'm just going to glaze over here. This is the Harmony, the rough just to see whether we see any disturbance of the layers underneath. Let's grab a little bit of the blue, whether we lose any of that clarity. So this is the sugar cane. The texture isn't as noticeable now, which is good when it dries, but of course, as soon as I wet it again, yeah, we're starting to get some of that texture showing through as soon as you wet it again. Ooh, that feels like some of the, the underlayer moved. So this was the bamboo and I would not expect this to be particularly good for glazing because it's a mixed media paper rather than being a specialist watercolour paper. And look, some of that pink is moving so it isn't as sort of grippy. Let's look at that Britannia. Mm. One slight criticism I would say I found a lot of the information quite hard to find. I mean, Hannibal has got this website, but it was really hard to find, say, that the Britannia was a cellulose paper. It just didn't seem to say it anywhere. Um, and I did really have to poke around to be able to find out what papers were cotton and what was cellulose. It's the sort of thing you do need to be able to find quite easily. Don't like how that's glazed over there. That seems to have mixed, so not not that great. And this was the agave. Whoops, come on to that Bockingford, which was just as a bit of a test. So when you're glazing, you want the under layer not to move around and physically mix with the top layer. You want, you want it to sort of mix optically so that you get that impression of more of an orange here because I put yellow on top of red or more of purple here because I put blue on top of the red. So you want it to be like stained glass that you have layers and that really lets you control and keep the clarity. And I would immediately say, just look, going back, that Britannia, that looks to me like it's muddied up far more than say that harmony that seems to have stayed and glazed quite nicely. So to test the lifting I've got some magic eraser here. If you don't know magic eraser it's this, it's a melamine sponge and you use it in your house, you use it for cleaning because it's slightly abrasive and in watercolour it's really useful for lifting very staining colours. Break off a bit, it just rips when it's dry, then dip it in water and squeeze out all of it so it's just a bit damp. Then you can rub it across the surface and you can see that it lifts the paint but can you see there it has lifted the surface what did I do three times it's lifted the surface of that agave let's try that over here with the Britannia one two three and then you just dab away what you've lifted there's no evidence of pilling there where's that bamboo one, two, three. Does seem to have pilled a little bit that bamboo. Sugar cane. One, two, three. Looks pretty good. Let's go for harmony. One, two, three. 
three. No evidence of pilling there. And then that Bockingford, one, two, three. So that's interesting. The agave seem to pill up the worst out of those. Just to test it again. One, two, three. Yeah, it definitely seems to pill up. On the bamboo, that lifting off more of the tint area rather than the concentrated area has, has lifted very well. And I can't see as much pilling. Out of all those papers, the agave does not like this rough treatment. So if you're going to be doing a lot of lifting and you know, you're quite rough on your papers. I don't think this is going to be good for you. I mean, the more gentle way of lifting is just to use something like a short flat brush, maybe just damp, and then you can soften edges. Say, say you wanted to soften an edge and you'd put a hard edge. You can usually soften it with that short damp brush or lift. And it certainly seems to let you do that not badly at all, but it really didn't like that super rough treatment. So after all that, what's my conclusion? Well, I guess the first thing to say is that we are now not limited to just cotton or wood. I was impressed with all three of those unusual fibres and how they worked. Sure, there were things that I liked less or more about the different papers but none of them were so horrible that I thought oh I'll just put the rest of that in the recycling bin. I didn't like the texture on the sugar cane so my natural preference would be to go towards the agave but I didn't really like the softness of that and the way that it, it potentially damaged so if I knew I was doing a particularly rough technique with lots of lifting out, then perhaps I would have to go back to the sugar cane. Whereas if I was doing lots of yummy wet and wet, maybe I'd go to the agave. And that bamboo, I really liked how the watercolour went on it, even though it was a mixed media paper. So I think this would be super to put in a mixed media journal. I think that's what I'll be doing next.